Well, the Pledge of Allegiance. One middle school teacher in New Hampshire has a big problem with it, apparently, uh, because Diane Dunfrey simply refused to stand in her classroom for the pledge. Well, when word got back to the principal, well, she says she was harassed and even feared for her own family's safety. And now she has filed a lawsuit. She claims her First Amendment rights were being violated. Now the case is heading to trial this fall. But here's the question. Does a teacher at a public school, now this is a public school, remember that, have the right not to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Joining me now is former prosecutor Joanna Greenwald and former defense attorney Joey Jackson. Um, okay, let me go to you first, Joanna, because she says that essentially uh, the school district violated her First Amendment right of free speech and that she said after refusing to stand for the pledge she received these warnings. Does she have the right to free speech and therefore does the school have the right to punish her if she doesn't choose to stand during the the allegiance? Absolutely and categorically not. She doesn't have that right. When you work in a public school system uh -huh. When you get there, you know where you, it's again where you first. It's a public school, and therefore, when you're there, you have limitations. You have rights, but they're qualified rights. They're limited rights, meaning that if you're going to be representing as an agent of the government, then you have to be limited because you're a public entity. So, if you're responsible for children, which is called parents patriae, you're in the place of a parent, mm -hmm. and you're a government agency, you don't have the rights you would do as a private citizen. So, her, her rights should be limited and, again, are qualified. So, no, she doesn't have any right like that. Joey? Well, <clears throat> we can agree to disagree. And uh, apparently, the judge believes that she has some rights because the judge says that she can proceed forward with a lawsuit. Right. Now, the school wanted uh, to throw, ask the federal judge to throw the case oh, out. Absolutely. The federal judge said, no, and we're going what, through And this. what they did, Julie, was this. They said, look, you have to exhaust your administrative remedies, you have to go through the collective bargaining process, you have to have arbitration. The judge said, no way, we're talking about constitutional rights, we're talking about constitutional liberties. Those rights are not limited in any manner. Yes, she has are. a right to, and we have a right to disagree, of course we do. But the reality is, is that in a 1983 action, when a municipality acting under color of state law deprives you of your First Amendment freedoms, it's problematic. The last thing I'll say before Joanna that, goes in to get and, and gets me. Pull me yeah. back, here I come. <laughs> the last thing I'll say before that is this. If you look at the policy itself, yep. Julie, if you look at the policy, it says it's optional. Look, she has an optional right either to stand or not. And let's not let's not forget, she hasn't been standing for the last 21 years. This is not unique. She's been not standing for her own personal and dignified reasons as she She puts doesn't it. get to say personal. <laughs> How about that one? Okay, you're completely wrong. She doesn't get to say that it's personally gets to do what she wants to do. She is what you like in a teacher is an extension mm -hmm. of an arm of a governmental agency, and she's in front of children. So therefore, she doesn't just get to say today, I'm not going to stand. No, she has to do the I right. Mean, okay, if we're going to talk say about that. constitutional rights here, how about the constitutional right to bear arms? So can the teacher <laughs> then walk into the school no, with a gun Julie, because she has the no, right to bear arms? No, it's not that, but it's different. The reality is... It is isn't different. No, hold no, on. No, it's not different. Hold on. We're talking about expression, and the reality is this, and the courts so far, and this should go up the constitutional chain of rights. absolute right? No, we're not, we're, nothing not. is absolute, She's but let's talk about... Let's talk about as a teacher, in general. I could speak from no, experience. And you could speak from experience, but the reality is this. The Constitution is what it is. The policy says it's optional. She's following the policy. Yeah. She filed the lawsuit. Okay. The judge said she but can't Joey, proceed. But Joey, how about just setting a good example for the kids? But, I mean, if you don't want to seem anti-American, right. I don't know. I, I just now, think the kids let should me say this, Julie. learn from a higher I, you role You know what? And I model. agree. But here's what I have to say about that. We have to set, you know, we have to lead by example. Mm. And we're, But we're raising children. That's a good that's example. An oh, that's, wait, that's an opportunity. Don't let Hold on. Just one yeah. other thing, Joanna, and I promise I'll You're be quiet. You're not even letting me tell you more. Right, we got to wrap. But the reality is, we, we are raising children, not sheep. The best example we go. can set is tolerance, diversity, differences of go. opinion. She chooses not to stand. That's her right. You don't get just to, if you, you're playing for the Yankees, you don't get to show up All in right. a Red Sox t-shirt, okay? You're in the public school. Too they bad. bury the t-shirt. Too bad. <laughs> and now it's out. Now it's gone. It's gone. We're all, all right. right. Time out, guys. <laughs> Joanna Greenwald, Joey Jackson, thank you both for coming on. A pleasure. Interesting debate. Thank you. Well, why? Well